Good morning, everybody. It's great to see you all today. I see some faces that maybe I haven't seen before. If this is your first time with us, or, or maybe your first time in a long time, or if you're a regular, but you just have new information for us, maybe you got a new cell phone number, new address, new P.O. box, whatever. Uh, if you would take a minute and fill out the, uh, the uh, Connect card in the seat back in front of you, and if you don't have one in the seat back in front of you, steal one from somebody else. Uh, and you can put that in the offering plate as it goes by. That's uh, just so that way I know to get, you, to get a hold of you and contact you um, if you want. Um, uh, but you can put that in the offering plate as if our ushers could come and grab those uh, and we'll pass that plate. If you'd like to give uh, and you don't have anything to put in the plate, have no fear. We are living in the 21st century and you can also give online. You can scan that code and give online through our app. If you already have the app and you don't use that to give, you can do that there as well. Um, uh, also, if you're watching this live on Facebook, there's a Give Now button on our page, and you can give that way as well. So uh, we do appreciate that you've come to worship with us today. Uh, there's, been, there's a lot of wonderful, awesome churches in this community, and the fact that you've chosen us, we don't take that lightly. We thank you so much for worshiping with us, either here in the building or watching at home. Uh, I do have a few announcements, just so you guys know some things that are coming up. Uh, this Wednesday is our annual business meeting, which I know you're like, oh, yes, business meeting, so exciting. Uh, but actually, it is. It's not too bad. Uh, the things that we're going to be going over is our proposed budget for next year, as well as ratifying two new elders to serve on the elder board as two people roll off. Uh, and so if you consider Landmark your church home and you want to have a say in, in some of the things that we do, uh, this is your chance to do so. Uh, so don't miss out. That is this coming Wednesday. Uh, we'll still have Children's Church and some other stuff happening as well. But uh, if Landmark is your home, you definitely don't want to miss our business meeting. That is on Wednesday. Uh, also coming up next Sunday, or excuse me, next Saturday is our Overstock Yard Sale. So this is a yard sale with all of the stuff we haven't had a chance to put out at our two other yard sales we've had this year. All right, we've got all of the stuff and we're ready to sell it. So we're actually gonna start setting up today after service, we're gonna start setting up. Uh, so if you have a few extra minutes, you can help us set up some tables or set up some clothing racks or move some bags out of storage. Uh, that would be great, but also, uh, any time during the week where you have some free time, the gym will uh, be open and you can come and you can sort through things and fold things and set stuff out. Uh, there's going to be lots of opportunities to help get that up. All the funds that we raise from this yard sale are going to our youth group to help pay for state youth convention and international youth convention and winter jam and all kinds of other trips and things that we're going to do with our students. So uh, make sure if even if you can't help with that, make sure you tell people about it. We do have some flyers you can take on the on the welcome desk. You can grab those and take them and put them around town. And also, if you're online, share that post about our yard sale, uh, because ooh, nobody else is having yard sales in November. So we want all of the business to us. So uh, but that is coming next Saturday. So, uh, and then as we look ahead down uh, to the rest of the month, uh, the Able Center Walk for Life is November 16th. I've been telling you guys, there's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board, and I realized on Monday that there was not a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board. My bad. There is now, though, uh, so there is a sign-up sheet for that. Uh, it says Walk for Life in my handwriting. So if you're like, what does that say? That's the one. Um, but also coming in, and that's November 16th. If you want information, Lauren Valentine would love to answer your questions about that. Um, also coming uh, later at the end of this month is the Greater Princeton Ministerial Association. We have our community Thanksgiving service, and that will be hosted at First Church of God on Mahood Avenue, our sister church. Uh, and they have this guest speaker guy. Um, and it's my turn. The, my, my number has been called. And so uh, I'll be sharing at the community Thanksgiving service. But also that morning, 
here at Landmark, that'll be our all music service. And we're going to be singing songs about thankfulness and thanksgiving and all of those wonderful things. We're also going to use that as an opportunity to take communion together. And so uh, if you would like to sing or, or bring something to share with us in the service, we would absolutely love for you to do that. Please get a hold of Bethany so you can get on the schedule for that day. I think one more announcement. Um, if you guys, it's hard to believe it, but Halloween's done, so you know what that means. Christmas. Yes. I don't know. I was, I was online the other day, and one of my friends was saying that, like, I just bought the candy, and now the Christmas music was playing in the store. It's like, we still got Thanksgiving, but Christmas is approaching, and part of Christmas, it means Christmas carols, and the Bluefield City Park Festival of Lights is offering the opportunity for us to come and sing some Christmas carols this year. And so that is December 6th is our evening to, to sing from 6 to 8 p.m., we have a two-hour slot. You're not going to have to sing continuously for two hours. You can stop and breathe a little bit, but that is our, uh, our time slot. So that is uh, December 6th, 6 to 8 p.m. Christina Cartwright is heading that up. So if you want to join our choir and go sing carols, please see her. There's also a sign-up sheet for that. It's the one you can read. Uh, that's also on the bulletin board. Awesome. I'm excited, too. All right. And then the last thing that I'm going to mention before I get off of this stage here for a few minutes, uh, you see the shoe boxes in front of me. You see them out there. Uh, it is time for Operation Christmas Child. If you're not exactly sure what that is, it's an opportunity to, to give gifts to children who've probably never gotten a Christmas present before. But not only do they get toys or blankets or Barbies or all of those wonderful things, but they also, as part of getting the, this physical gift, is the gift of hearing the gospel presented in their language in a way they can understand. And there's a video we're going to watch that explains it better than I can. So turn your attention to this, and then after that, Bethany will come up with our verse of the week. My name is Ina, and I am from Ukraine. I read the Vision Box when I was six. It is the most greatest memory from my childhood. And um, my favorite item was a card with the message that Jesus loves me. I didn't know much about Jesus back then, but I think it was the beginning of my Christian journey. In February 2022, I woke up uh, in the morning because of the sounds of exposure and I remember that we had five minutes to pack up my stuff so I wasn't thinking about food clothes or anything I wanted to be safe and um, I was scared and I was frustrated I was crying because you live in that day you're not sure will be you alive next day the only thing that what I was sure was God, that He has me and that I can trust Him. I stayed in Poland for a couple months and once I received a message from Samaritans first that they help Ukrainians to um, find a host family in UK and I was very excited and back then I caught a bright memory, me, six years, receiving a shoebox. I was uh, blessed because my host family uh, was a Christian lady and she took me to a service next day. Uh, it was a new world with the support and I feel, felt that um, people care and people love and that they will support me no matter what, no matter what background I had. It's a huge blessing to continue to serve uh, with Operation Christmas Child here in UK. And it's simple as it is. We want to share the gospel and we want to say that God loves you. He has a perfect plan for everyone and his love is 
bigger than everything. What a beautiful story. I just love that. I love hearing the stories about the kids who grew up and they were impacted and they end up serving Jesus. That's what it's all about. So in today's edition of Landmark Learns the Bible, we're going to the book of Ephesians. And uh, this is one way that we can help live out our faith every day. So from Ephesians 4.29, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Say it with me. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Ephesians 4, 29. So that is our challenge for this week. Um, worship team, why don't you join me up here? We're going to transition over to our musical time of worship. Everything is worship. Um, and sometimes we just sing more than others. This first song that we're going to do is one of my most favorite hymns, and it's always spoken to me, even since I was a little kid. It's called, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. But, um, okay, now my, my online Bible's not working. Oh, here it is. Um, so in Mark chapter 9, Jesus is approached by a man who's, child is possessed by demons and um he's he said to jesus if you can do anything take pity on us and help us and jesus said if you can everything is possible for those who believe and this is the verse that always gets me immediately the boy's father said i do believe help me overcome my unbelief so jesus didn't say to this poor man who was struggling Eh, your faith isn't really good enough. I'm not going to help you. Or, nope, sorry, wrong answer, not good enough. Or, But Jesus saw him. He saw that he was trying. He loved him. And so that man's attitude is, I believe, but I want to believe more. Has anybody ever felt like that? I feel like that all the time. I believe, but I want to believe more. God, help me to do more and to, to, to trust you more. So even if you don't know the words of this song or it's a, it's a serious blast from the past, I pray that you will feel these words, oh, for grace to trust him more. Would you join us standing?
that lay between us how high the mountain i could not climb in desperation i turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written jesus christ my living Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living Lord. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free.
about faith and the opportunity to draw, draw closer to you, God, we are so grateful that we can approach your throne with confidence, knowing that we have a Savior that loves us and a Savior that wants a relationship with us. God, I pray that um, through the songs, through the sermon, through everything, that you would just draw us closer to you and help us to live out a faith that doesn't just happen on Sundays, but it's on Monday and every other day of the week, no matter where we are or whatever we're doing, God, that we are still yours no matter what. Lord, I pray for our kids as they go off to children's church and for the nursery workers and all the people that volunteer to help. Lord, I pray that you would bless our kids and our workers. And Lord, just continue your work in here too and give us hearts to respond. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Kids, you're dismissed to children's church. Have a good time. And uh, grown-ups, let's greet one another and say hello to anyone who you haven't had a chance to greet yet. Y'all are still hugging, but that's okay. That's okay.
So this is the fourth and final week in our series called Monday Morning Faith. Uh, that, that last song that we sang together, that's the name of that song. That's where uh, the idea of this uh, kind of sermon series has come from. Uh, but the point of it wasn't just to introduce a new song to you and make you sing it four weeks in a row. But the point of the series is to, is to help us learn and see what can happen in our lives when we move past a Sunday morning faith into a Monday morning faith. Now, uh, for those who haven't been here for the whole ser series, you can find those on our YouTube page or on our Facebook. But the first one, our first week, we kind of came up with our definition for what Monday morning faith is. It's, it's a cool phrase. It sounds great when you sing it. But what is that, right? If like, I want you to want that, but what is, what is it I'm asking you to sign up for? Well, um, the definition of Monday morning faith that we've been using is a faith in the Lord that has influence in every area of our lives, a faith that lives with us every day, not just something that causes us to go to church on Sunday mornings. And this series, as I mentioned, has been inspired by the song of the same name, and I hope you've been enjoying that. And so each week we've kind of been taking that song apart and looking at the scripture behind the lyrics and, and what those things could look like if we move from it from a song to almost a, a lifestyle. And so the first week of our series kind of offered a big picture overview of what Monday morning faith looks like, and that's where we came up with that definition. And but the main points of week one were that it takes, in order to get this Monday morning faith, you don't just wake up and decide you're going to have that and then have it. If you really want a faith that impacts every area of your, area of your life, it takes an intentional daily effort to connect with God and to see his blessings in your life. If you really want that, you're going to have to work a little bit for it. And you're going to have to make the time and effort to connect with God every day. On our second week of this series, we focused on a few specific ideas in the song, in the first verse, uh, especially the concept of developing a faith of our own, right? The song sings, I want more than my mother's faith. Well, that means you have to ask your own questions and get your own answers, right? If, if we want a faith of our own, that allows us to hear from God in the everyday activities of our lives, we have to earn that and develop that on our own. And he does speak to us in the mon seemingly mundane moments. Most of our experiences with God are not going to be amazing, firework, miracle experiences. Those do happen, but that is not the normal of our relationship with God. He shows up in all of the things we do. And we got to learn to hear him there. Last week, we looked at verse 2 of that song in the chorus and came away with some challenges and encouragements, uh, a couple of them. The first was the fact that worship is a lifestyle. It's not the singing part of a service. As Bethany told us today, worship isn't uh, just everything is worship. It's not just the singing part, but worship is a lifestyle that gives glory to God and allows, uh, excuse me, gives glory to God. And then the second challenge we had last week was uh, trying to allow his calling in your life to make you come alive, right? Scripture teaches us that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus comes to give us life, full, abundant life. What does that look like? Well, it means you hear what he's asking you to do, and you do it. And then all of a sudden, you can find, like, look, I've been alive, but I haven't really been living. So that was last week. And as we close out our series today, we're going to look at the last part of the song that's left, the bridge of the song. And so we're going to talk about that. But let's pray together before we look at some more lyrics. God, we thank you for the, today. We thank you that you can speak to us through a variety of ways, whether it be a song, whether it be opening the scriptures and reading them for ourselves, whether it's prayer like we're doing right now, or even through the words of another believer. God, you speak to us in so many ways. The challenge for us isn't necessarily to seek you out and find you, but our challenge is to listen for what you're saying. God, we ask that you would help us to do that. Give us ears to hear what you're trying to say. Give us eyes to see what you're trying to do. And give us obedient hearts to do what you've called us to do. To hear your voice when you're calling. 
and to act on what you're telling us to do. God, we thank you for this song and for those who've written it. We ask that it would be a blessing to them as it's been a blessing to us. And we ask that you'd be with the rest of our service today, that people, that we are here to, to connect with you. And we ask that you would make your presence felt among us even now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So um, before we get into the lyrics, um, I don't know how many of you are songwriters or musicians. Um, does anybody know what the point of a bridge in a song is? If anybody knows, you can raise your hand. Okay, a couple of you. It connects one part to another. That's what it is. I should have looked it up because I didn't write this down. I'm just winging this part. I didn't have this down. I just, that was a question. I was like, does anybody have a better definition of a bridge? Uh, a lot of times in worship music, there's a lot of jokes because certain songwriters will write like 10 bridges in a song. And we're like, where are you going? What are you connecting? And why have we sung these same 10 words 11 times? Um, and so there's a little bit of a joke there. But the point of a bridge is a transition. It's not exactly a verse, and it's certainly not a chorus, but it's, it's a way to turn around and move the song from one part either back to something that was already done or move to a different section. A bridge just connects two parts of a song. The bridge of this song uh, serves that same function, but also provides what, what to me, uh, was one of the more powerful lyrics in the whole song, uh, at least in, in me. And then obviously, uh, everyone's opinion of that, uh, which lyrics speak to them, may be different. But for me, some of the more powerful ones came in the very opening of this bridge. And, and the lyrics of that say, Hell's not scared of a Sunday faith if it only leads to an empty praise. What really makes darkness run is when the saints arise and praise in quiet. That is one of the reasons, that, that first two lines, right? Hell's not scared of a Sunday faith if it only leads to an empty praise. That is what caught my attention when I heard this song the first time. It's a pretty song, and it was cool, and it was nice. But when they got to that part, I was like, oh, man, some words there. Like, what kind of a faith do I have? Am I, am I making darkness run with the faith that I have, or am I just kind of skating by? And maybe you, like me, hear that. You say, well, hell's not scared of a Sunday faith. And you're like, what really makes darkness run? And you're like, hold on, Jeff. Look, man, I'm not trying to change the world. I'm just trying to get through life as best I can and get to heaven at the end. Like, that sounds great, fighting against darkness, but I'm just trying to get up every day. And so maybe to you, that's overwhelming. And you're like, man, I don't have that faith. I'm not there yet. I don't know if I even want to that. I'm just trying to get by. And look, that's where a lot of believers start their faith journey. And so if that's you, if you're kind of new to this and, and maybe you've only been a Christian for a little while and you're like, well, that's too much for me. I'm, I'm not there yet. Well, that's fine. I'm not upset with you for that. I'm not judging you for that. If, if you're new to the faith, that's a, the, a great place to start. But I want to encourage you to take every day to go one little step at a time. And eventually, this will be your new goal. Maybe your goal right now is just to make it day to day. I'm going to try to pray today. I'm going to try not to yell at my kids today. I'm going to try to not be mean at my boss today. I'm going to just try to, to read my Bible for five minutes today. That's my goal. That's a great goal. And if you're starting, keep doing that one day at a time. And as your faith grows, you'll move. And you'll eventually get to a place where your goal in faith is to do more than just get by. Your goal in faith is going to be to start growing the kingdom of God. One day you'll get there. And so if you're new to the faith and this is intimidating to you, that's all right. You'll get there someday. Just keep on keeping on. This whole song and this whole sermon series has been about moving beyond the beginning of inviting Jesus into your life, moving beyond that moment of salvation and inviting God to move in all areas of your life. So again, if you're not here yet, keep going and keep growing. You're in a great spot. But... For those of you, 
like me, and you've been a believer for a little while, maybe 5, 10, 20 or more years, and you find yourself still in that same position of just trying to get by and sneak in a few minutes with Jesus here and there, I am judging you because it's time to grow up and it's time to move beyond that. It's time, if you've been believers for a long time and you still hold this attitude of, I'm just trying to get by, Jesus. I don't want to change the world. I just want to get by. You've been get, Jesus has been getting you by for 10 years. It's time to grow up and move forward. It's time to have a faith that moves out into the world and changes things, changes the atmosphere when you show up in a room. It's time to move beyond just getting by to doing real damage for the kingdom of God. And the purpose of our salvation isn't just to get by. God has so much more for that. I quoted that scripture just a few minutes ago that Jesus comes to bring us life and life to the full or a life to the abundant. Just getting by is not what he has for you. His plans for you are so much better, but we hamstring ourselves so many times. And while it's okay to, and completely normal to ha go through seasons of life, you'll have a season of just getting by. We can't stay there forever. We got to get back on the journey and keep taking steps forward. We're called and equipped to do so much more. And I love the church. I just shared this in the very first thing. My ministry, what God has called me to do is to the church. The church is not perfect, it is, but it is amazing. And it is wonderful, but it has made many mistakes through the years. And we've had seasons of really good things and seasons of really bad things. Not just this particular group of believers. I mean the church with a capital C, uh, specifically the church in America is where I'm called to. And this is unfortunately one area where we've kind of dropped the ball. And pastors have preached to get people saved, but hasn't told them what comes after that. We haven't discipled people and shown them and equipped them that there's more to your faith than just going to heaven when you die. There's so much that God has for us before we get to that point that we're missing out. And, and I'm not the only one who sees that many pastors and preachers and teachers are out there teaching that there's more to life than just getting into heaven at the end of it. There's a lot more to be done. The truth is, as this song says, only a few more people need to wake up to change this world. A few more believers need to stand up and take steps forward in their faith to start making a difference. Maybe that's you, and definitely maybe that's me. So what's this more, though, that I keep talking about? What is this song talking about with it when it talks about, like, wh what do you mean hell is scared and darkness is running? That sounds great in a song. What does that mean? What does that look like? We're going to start uh, kind of at the end and work our way backwards. The last line of that is, says, what makes the darkness run is what? When the saints arise and praise in quiet. That doesn't sound very intimidating, right, does it? Which is, which is scarier to you? When somebody comes running at you, screaming and yelling and making lots of noise, or when someone is just quietly, like, sitting there, which one is scarier, A or B? A, thank you. You guys are awake and paying attention, right? Yeah. So how does the saints arising and praising in quiet, like what does that come from? That seems the opposite of fighting against hell, right? Or making darkness run away. Well, this idea comes all over from scripture, but the idea is that we don't actually have to do the fighting. God does the fighting on our behalf, and our job is to invite him into those and to spend time with those and to connect with him and to bring him into our situations. It starts all over scripture, but we're going to go back to the Psalms. In Psalms 46, verse 10, it has this idea. It says, be still, be still. It's so hard, it's so hard. It's incredibly difficult for me. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. He says, look, be still, acknowledge me. Just don't do anything. Let me work. I will take care of it. I will be exalted. I will 
be lifted up. I will prove that I am who I am, that I'm the King of kings and Lord of lords. Your job is to be still and know. Be still and trust me. And so it says when the saints arise and praise and quiet, that's what makes a difference. It's when we can trust God instead of trusting ourselves. That's so hard. Be still and know. We see this lived out in the life of Jesus in so many places. Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 5. Jesus is teaching them. He says, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This is this idea of praising and praying and and like it's quiet it doesn't have to be a public display it doesn't have to be this big thing be still and know trust God in those quiet moments that's what makes a difference and Jesus not only did he teach this but he lived it out and and later on in Matthew chapter 14 we see just one of many examples of him doing this very thing right he says immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side of, the, of this lake while he dismissed the crowd. This is just after he fed 5,000 people. It's a big old miracle. He's taught them. He's preached to them. He's done a huge, massive thing. And now it's kind of people are picking up the leftovers. And he's, Jesus is sending people home. And he's, he tells the disciples, look, get in the boat. Go to the other side. I'll catch up with you later. And after he dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, right? Him, he would go away and pray in quiet by himself. He didn't go and do more miracles and miracles and do, 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 like we have a tendency to do. He did the things, and almost every time he did something major, and even many times that he did something what we consider to be minor, he would break away and go spend quiet time just with the Father alone. We see this again in Mark chapter 1, starting in verse 35. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. Like, where you've been, Jesus? We got stuff to do. We got people to heal and prayers to answer. You got food to multiply we got water to turn into wine come on jesus we got a schedule and like where are you everyone's looking for you well jesus was doing exactly what we neglect to do arising and praising in quiet so why does that make the darkness run because that's when the lord can move in us and we can hear clearly what he's trying to say and not be clouded what other people want us to do or even the things that we want to do These passages don't imply that we can only worship quietly when we're alone, okay? That we can worship together corporately as we've done here. We can sing the loud songs. I've been next to you at some stoplights. Some of you are not quiet in the car, all right? You can praise as loud as you want to, right? They don't imply that we can only worship quietly when we're alone, but the idea is that we worship him all the time. In the quiet moments by ourselves or in church services, it's not one or the other, it's both. All the time. Worship and praise are are meant to be an all the time thing. Not something you turn on or off based on what day of the week it is or what building you're in. So then we'll go to the, the other side of this verse, other section of this verse, right? We'll quickly turn our attention to this concept of scaring hell away and making darkness run. Now, that sounds cool. I've been a Christian for long enough. I want to do that. How do I do that? Well, by being, it's not as exciting maybe as it sounds. We do that by being the light and expanding the kingdom of God wherever we go, no matter what day of the week it is. 
So what does that look like? Well, we go back to the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 and 16. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl, but instead they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. We make the darkness run. We scare hell away when we have a faith that's more than just sitting and singing songs. When we actually live out what we say we believe in the presence of other people, not so they pat us on the back, but so that they recognize God and give him glory for that. That's worship. That's what it is to expand the kingdom of God, to make a difference in this world, to be more light and to overcome the darkness that's around us or on the news all the time. And when we do that, we get to Matthew chapter 28, starting in verse 18. Then Jesus came to them, his disciples, after his resurrection. These are the last words he speaks in the Gospels. And he says, all authority or all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, I got a job for you. I got some homework for you to do. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. A lot of times we focus on the baptizing and making disciples of all nations, and we forget this part, the teaching to obey them, everything I've commanded you right? That's the whole point of this series. If you want a Monday morning faith, it means hearing what God's voice and doing what he's told you to do. That starts with scripture. Jesus has told us a whole lot of things we're supposed to do already, and a lot of us aren't doing them, or at least not doing them as well as we could be. So until we get that stuff figured out, he's not going to reveal any new stuff to us, right? And so you teach them to, the disciples have to teach them all the stuff Jesus taught them, And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. We don't do it alone. He comes with us. But if that's what it means to make darkness run, that's what it means to make hell afraid is when you have a real faith that you actually live out in front of other people. When you actually share the gospel of Jesus with other people, whether they believe it or accept it, when you share it with them, the fact is you're out there doing it. People can't help. People can't deny what God is doing. It's powerful. And then we move on to the rest of this song, the, the other lyrics on the bridge. And it's just the days of the week, right? On Monday and on Tuesday and on Wednesday. To know you, to love you, to choose you first on Thursday and Friday and Saturday, right? All of the days. It's not just a Sunday thing. They did a really cool job putting the days of the week here, not making it sound like a children's song, right? I think they did a good job, right? But these words are continuing this thought of having a faith that impacts every area of your life every day. It's not, faith is not just about believing in God and showing up to church on Sundays. It's about putting that in action all the time. It's not something that prompts you to show empty praise on Sunday in a church building, as they sang in that opening line, right? Hell's not scared of a Sunday faith. All that is is empty praises. And then we move on to the next lyrics. It says, to see you, behold you in worship, singing hallelujah, holy, holy, glory to the king of kings. Hallelujah, holy, holy, all honor and glory belongs to you. This is essentially a repetition of what's going to happen in heaven. We, like we talked about last week in verse 2, keeping up with what the angels are doing in heaven. This is uh, kind of a paraphrase of, of what we get in the book of Revelation, of what people are singing to Jesus in heaven. This is it. That's pre- preparing us for what's there. So there's this word there. Hallelujah shows up a couple times. How many of you have heard that word before? How many of you know what it means? Okay, a couple of you. Significantly less than have heard it before. And, and I thought to myself, I was like, hallelujah. What does that actually mean? I've said it a whole bunch. It's in the Bible all over the place. 
What does that mean? Well, basically, it, it's a Hebrew compound word that means let us praise the Lord. And depending on your translation of scripture, some of them say hallelujah, and sometimes it says praise the Lord. Uh, I was looking in, in the New International Version that I have, I was looking at one of the Psalms, and it ends, and it said praise the Lord. And then I looked up in a different version, and it said hallelujah, and I was like, whoa. It's just sometimes it gets translated, sometimes it doesn't. But if you ever are reading, especially in the Psalms, and it says, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, like three or four times, that's just hallelujah. And so that was fun. I thought it meant a lot more than that, but that's basically it. Praise the Lord. But it's all over Scripture in a variety of situations. We see it sometimes in a Psalm that is good and happy, and they're like, I can't wait to go worship in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Here we go. We're going to, my soul sings because of all the goodness, and hallelujah is everywhere. That makes sense. Let's praise the Lord for good things. It also shows up in really bad things. There's other Psalms where David or some other Psalm writers are talking about how their enemies have surrounded them whether real physical enemies or imagined emotional distress. I'm not, we're not exactly sure. But these moments of, of feeling low and feeling empty, and they say, where are you, Lord? Like, I'm looking and you're not here. I can't feel you anymore. Those are not happy psalms. And yet they also say, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It shows up in good times, in bad times, in happy times, sad times, and all other motions and emotions and moments in between. Praising the Lord is something we do in songs. That's why we sing here. But over time, that should grow. This idea of hallelujah should just be part of what we do. Good times, bad times, indifferent times, we hallelujah we let us praise the lord it's something that we just do with our lives not an empty phrase or some empty praise but a true lifestyle and so this song as beautiful as it is gives us a lot to unpack and a lot to think about there's a lot that went into that and a lot that god is teaching to me and hopefully to all of us so before we leave here today we're going to sing that the whole thing together. That way we can put it all together, all the pieces we've been learning. And then as soon as we're done with that, I have a couple prayer requests that we're going to gather together and pray together. So if you have a prayer request, uh, you don't have to come up during the song. You can, as soon as it's done, I'm going to stand right here. And there's a few people I'm going to call up. And then if you have something that you want to share, you can come up at that time too. Uh, but if you're willing... If you're able, would you please stand with us as we sing this song one more time? Join the worship team.
hope that you have enjoyed our deep dive into this. It's a little bit different than the way I, we normally do here, but um, maybe we'll take a look at some other songs from time to time, if that's okay. Uh,